Jeff definitely was influential with myself and a lot of my peers in helping us to think about, you know, what was wrong with our community, you know, but the responsibility that we had to improve that. And I think, I think that was probably the biggest thing that I took. There was a moment in his, um, there was a couple moments in his senior year. And I, I, I guess the, the one I'll, I'll drill down on a little bit is they had this writing portfolio. Did he tell you about this? I don't think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, he, he, you know, the thing about David was he was always so above where the school was. And, and it wasn't like this, at some level it was, it was adolescent, but at another level it was, it was um, so morally solid that he knew right from wrong. And, and he was so smart and he was so talented that, and he refused to keep his mouth shut when, um, when the school would engage in ways that were racist or classist. And I was not, um, I was not immune to that treatment. <laughs> I, I, he, would, he would give it to me too. And um, so we had this project where he had been admitted to Berkeley and he was the kid who got admitted to Berkeley that wasn't supposed to get admitted to Berkeley because he wasn't the leadership kid and he wasn't the nice kid and he wasn't the straight A kid. He was the kid who had his thumb on you all the time. And so he got into Berkeley and he was just like, whatever, right? And everybody's like, but David, you got into Berkeley, right? And he just refused to sort of pander to that elitism. And <clears throat> so he's in a Berkeley and he's got my senior English class and they do this, they this writing portfolio at the end where they were supposed to turn in selected works um, for a sort of final like evaluation of where you're at as a writer as you move into college. And the idea was that I was going to read their writing and I was going to say, look, here's a couple things that I see in your writing that you got to tighten up before you right, get to college. So I get all these portfolios from all my seniors. And, you know, they're majestic. And, and at some level, it was like also kind of for me, like to sort of admire what they had done, right? So I'm, I'm grading them and I get David's. And I open it up and it's feeling kind of light because he's, he's a really strong writer and he had written some really good pieces and it's feeling kind of light. And so I, I open it up and there's the cover page and it's like, stupid it's like doesn't there's nothing profound in the title you know it's like my portfolio or something right from your Berkeley kid so I'm like okay so I turn the page and then it's the table of contents and it's again like story number one dot 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 and then the page number one and then story number two dot 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 page number two so I turn the page of story number one and it says something to the effect of, I have nothing for you here, period. See next page. So I turn the page and it says the same thing on the next one and the same thing on the next one. And I am hot. I am so pissed that he has, so my read on it is he's put his feet up because he's into Berkeley and you know, and now he's pinched me in because he knows I won't flunk him and block him from going to Berkeley that I, I would never do that. And so he knew technically he didn't have to do the portfolio. And he put me to my test. He, 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 he tested my rhetoric, like, is your rhetoric real? And so I, I left it to the side, I was so mad. And I left to the side and I just, I thought about it for a long time and I graded all the other ones. And I think I left it for a couple of days. And I wrote a bunch of different responses to him. Some were just like, you know, you, fucker <laughs> and then some were like you know deep philosophical right and I finally settled on this one where I said so I decided I was gonna give him some of his own medicine so I came back at him with this really short curt response where I said um, I gave him an A perfect score and I said um, one day you will understand why I gave you this grade and when you do come talk to me period, like 250 out of 250, A plus, right? Gave it back to him. 
<clears throat> and he doesn't say anything to me. No, nothing comes of it. Okay. And years pass. He goes to Berkeley. Does incredibly well there as a history major. Goes to UCLA. Goes in their very elite credential program. Becomes a, a really solid teacher in South LA. And then we open the school and we bring him back up here to teach. So he teaches down the hallway from me, um, a younger grade in the high school. And, um, and like I said, he's just magical as a teacher. We get to this last cohort, Lehabim's cohort, Ruby's cohort, Jose Sodi's cohort, their senior year. The school gets closed. So David doesn't have his job there. We're out of there. So I say, you know, D, you know, would you come team teach with me at whatever school we go to? He's like, yeah, I'm in there. So we team teach the senior class together. And probably the best teaching experience I've ever had. And we're talking to them about their portfolios. And he goes to his car and opens his trunk and pulls out his senior year portfolio. And he brings it to me and he says, um, I understand. And um, I knew all along that I had made the right decision about how to grade that portfolio because of what I had seen, the trajectory he had right, gone on. But it was in that moment that it really affirmed for me that when I wrote that, I knew I was going to be in his life forever. I knew he would come back and see me and that, that, that why I graded and responded in that way would make sense to him. He had kept that portfolio with no work in it. Like who does that, right? Who keeps their high school stuff anyway, but the high school stuff that's empty, that had, that had nothing from his high school in it. And in fact, probably the shortest response I had given him on anything he had written, and that was the piece he saved. And because that may have been one of the most meaningful piece of advice I gave him in, in the time that he was in my class. So he said, I understand and nothing more? Yeah. So what's the, what, if it were a movie and they explained it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted to explain? Yeah. Um, that um, punishment doesn't work. That you, when, when a student does something, you have to try to understand why they did that at that time and what it is that they're really looking for from you. And he was looking for advice from me about what he's supposed to do at Berkeley. That I'm in there and I don't need you to help me with my writing right now. I need you to help me with my Berkeley. What, 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 what am I supposed to do there? What am I supposed to take there with me? What's the mission? What's the charge? I know I'm not just supposed to go there and get a degree. And um, my response was that he already knew. That you already know what to do. And um, you don't need me anymore. Not right now. You don't need me. You're ready. You've got to know it when, when that moment is right to tell a kid you're ready. Because when your relationship is that strong and, it's, and the bond is that strong, then there's a tendency where it can become a crutch, right? And, and I think what young people, they want to know they have you. They want to know they can lean on you. Um, they want to know you're going to be there, but they also want to know they can stand on their own. And it's such a slippery slope, right? Because if, you, if, if they're leaning on you all the time, when you pull yourself out, they fall. And so can you avoid that? Can you get them standing upright? and then get some distance from, it's like the training wheel thing, you know, when you like learn to ride a bike and then you, and then they let go and you don't know they've let go. And you, so you're moving along and then you realize they let go and all of a sudden you get wobbly. You're like, right? And you weren't, they had let go, you know, 25 feet ago. That's what teaching's like when you're with a young person over multiple years and the relationship is really strong and they believe in you and they believe in themselves because they believe in you and they believe in themselves because they know you believe in them. There has to be a moment where they launch, right? And, um, 
and they're they're like, oh shit, right? I'm on my own. I'm on my own, and I, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm doing this, and that was that moment for him. I've seen so many kids in Oakland sabotage themselves at that moment because success is so frightening. And to, to launch into this other world or this other space where I'm not going to be there or that key person is not going to be there. And that self, I mean, that's what happened to me. You know, when I launched and I got to Berkeley and I just bottomed out because I didn't really believe in myself. And I mean, I did and I wanted to, but I also didn't. And then suddenly I was in this space where everybody seemed to believe in themselves. And I started doubting myself and I started doubting myself. And I, you know, David knew I went to Berkeley and he knew what happened to me there. And he, part of him had to be wondering, like, is that um, going to happen to me? You know, am I going to go there? Am I going to bottom out? Am I going to ass out there? Or am I really ready? And I don't need you to evaluate my writing right now. I need you to evaluate me. And my response to him was, you're ready. And one day you'll understand that. I would guess that a lot of my colleagues would have flunked him to send him a message that you are, this won't fly at Berkeley. If you try this kind of thing, right, you're going to flunk out and I will be doing you a disservice by passing you here, right, because I'll, I'll be preparing you to go into Berkeley mm -hmm. because they think somehow, um, Berkeley's admissions committee was not qualified to determine whether or not he was ready. Right? For me, it's like, okay, like he's admitted, he's ready. So what do I need to teach him now that is beyond the, the scope and pale of a high school senior English literature classroom? And that's what those two sentences were about.